I would have opened up a retail outlet right away because one of the things that I think that I, that you can do in your local community is network. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people miss out on that. They don't put value in it yeah, and they don't put their name out there. And I think with branding capacity now through the internet, social media, Facebook, you know, all the ways that you can brand yourself, you can brand yourself pretty quickly in a local market and establish yourself as a market authority. As you as you network in your church and your local chamber of commerce and your networking events and your associations, and just putting your name out there uh, and doing your local branding, uh, you're going to build a name for yourself. Welcome back to the Life Insurance Academy podcast. I'm sitting here with Zach, mm. with Roger, boom, and the Bobbleheads. They're hanging out with us too, as usual, per usual. Mm. Did your arm come back? <laughs> it did. Yeah. Did you lose your arm? Yeah, busted that arm right off, <laughs> did man. Did you really? Yeah. Adam actually got it back together. <laughs> Good. Adam Good job, performed Adam. surgery and reattached my arm. I'm still. Still pointing. This isn't like a voodoo thing. Did you like have issues with your arm, like physically as a human being, when uh, that happened? Well, I think Adam was mad at me one day, and he was like, <laughs> "I'm going to show him." <laughs> Roger developed tendonitis. <laughs> yeah. Now I have. Now I have a oh. big knot on my elbow over here. That's, that's what happens. Yeah. So, uh, welcome back. Everybody, just we're going to start out. over. Welcome <laughs> yeah. back to the Life let's, Insurance Academy. Let's, let's do that podcast. all over again. No, we're, we're growing. We're what? Rolling. Where we don't take <laughs> edits. No edits. No edits. So oh. here's the question for the podcast listeners today, Roger and Zach. Boom. All right. What would you do if you started over in the insurance industry? Boom. Boom. Matter of fact, this is... <laughs> this do you is, think you're done now because you asked the question? <laughs> yes. And now the rest of it is up yeah. to us? So this is the, like, the Marvel Universe thing. What is it called, Adam? Multiverse. This is the multiverse scenario. If you could start over completely in this business. Does it have to include you two? <laughs> <laughs> no, because ours won't. Words. Yeah. You wouldn't be here. That's right. See? Everything That's gets right. erased. Everything. We're Thanos gone. snap. Thanos snap. It's all over. There we go. I don't know. If you could start over, or if you did start over, or... I could start over, what would I do different? Yeah. What would you do, do different? I think that's an interesting question when people ask you, know, if you could go back to relive certain parts of your life, would you do that? Mm-hmm. And the older I get... <laughs> and you're laughing because there was a pause there. The older I get, the more I probably would say no. I wouldn't go back and relive anything. I would actually go through the same stuff again. Because I think it's just some of those experiences that get you to where you are. And I don't think you'd want to sacrifice what we have now for right. something that could have been different. Mm. But mm, that preaches. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how I feel about life in general now. Right. Right. Knowing some stuff about life insurance sales. Mm-hmm. Would I do some things differently as I was getting ramped up? If yes. I could keep all the same people, right? Yeah. And not like yeah, the relationships. Thanos snap them out of my life because I wouldn't want to do but that. You would, but you would want to some of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm I, kidding. I I'm not saying any names. No, there's truth in that. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't want to just Thanos snap them. That's just evil. Yeah, that's, that's dark. But they all have the opportunity to come back with mm-hmm. another time machine. So. That's right. Yeah. I always have a theory like <laughs> I don't even know why I'm saying this. This is completely off the rails about <laughs> time travel in the future so if it's I, a normal conversation it is a normal <laughs> conversation like it it doesn't exist or it's it's just too expensive it doesn't <laughs> what doesn't exist like it doesn't happen in my lifetime it doesn't exist or it's too expensive time travel time because travel i know where would you Fut- go future me would have come back and said something to me at some point like what are you doing bro <laughs> <laughs> Like, you're ruining everything here. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Future you would have come back. Oh, certainly. Or most what, certainly. what age would he come back? Oh, 27, 21, 18. Before, before <laughs> middle school. Yeah, before middle school. Before middle school. Remember those hey, two kid. years? <laughs> like, some creepy, wrinkled guy. Wasn't there a movie with some... Oh, I'm sure. There's a movie with some actor. Yeah. I forget who it yeah. was. But yeah. yeah. 
Nate Bergazzi, the comedian, talks about time travel. And Nate he Bergazzi. Says, he says uh, he, if, if he did time travel back into the past, that he would be worse off than he is today because he wouldn't help anything. Like they would say, okay, prove what president. Tell us a president. And he would say, uh, Abraham Lincoln. And they, they, Abraham Lincoln would have been president already at that point. So I'm ruining the joke, but it's pretty funny, actually. He's like, I would have been a dishwasher or something if I... If you go back? (laughs) Yeah. I promise you, anybody who's listened to this podcast in their car, their GPS just (laughs) shut off and told them to reroute. (laughs) Everybody's lost. Okay. All right. What would you do differently? That is the question. Remove time travel and Thanos snaps. Do we have to talk about how we started? No, no, no. I guess not. I mean, the people who are listening to us for the first time, they may not know how we started. Right. Mm-hmm. But we need to have context to that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know. Okay, I'll, I will say this. I started slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should reframe the question. That is the right question. No, that's, it's the right question. I think question. it's a good question. What would you... What would no. you say? I would say, if you started today knowing everything you know about insurance mm. and what you've learned, mm. then you had to start a, a new business in the insurance space oh, right dude. now, what would you do? Dude. That's the a different one question. Thing, the one thing I know I would do differently is Medicare. Mm. Medicare. Yeah. There's some stuff there. <laughs> I've heard I've heard there's some wins. People are making some some loot helping people with Medicare. Like making some loot. <laughs> I would I would look into that and I would move faster. That is true. Those are the two things. I don't believe that second part. Oh, I, if I knowing what I know now, I, oh, I, I still promise don't believe you. It. I still don't believe it. Come on. <laughs> that's that's insulting. <laughs> Some level. So, how did you start? Uh, I was part-time for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what was the what was the transition? <laughs> oh my gosh. The transition, oh, well, I, was I mean, part-time for a bit. You, you talked to me about this opportunity and drew your circles and the ability to grow an organization and all this stuff. And all I could think of is sales, 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 and talking to Lisa and deciding to, to move forward with this, you know, at that time I didn't have any savings. I was working at the roofing supply company. And when you talked about leads, you had to pay for, I think it was three weeks ahead of time before you saw a lead yeah. in the, in your hand mm-hmm. and all a I knew one. Yeah. And all I had a new one, but that was all that was available. <laughs> was a new one <laughs> that was it so all i had on the other hand was a discover card and that was it and i was like i guess this hand's gonna get leads so i'm gonna put this <laughs> in the machine and i did i got leads but i uh didn't commit full time i was doing it two or three days a week that's what i was doing so did that for a year and a half and you were transitioning out of a full-time job correct you lost that mm-hmm. job because of a downsize. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's previous. Yes. Yeah. Correct. And then mm-hmm. so you decided to enter into this and you were you were waiting tables yeah, for a while. Yeah. So it, like you were a high capacity dude. Oh, tell Your me. Your wife about, just right. got a job of, you know, what yeah, she's always tell me wanted. About it. You're a high capacity yeah. dude. You're waiting tables mm-hmm. and you're uh, then you transition to a roofing supplies company. Yeah, and I think part of the transition that that was a mi- big season of transitions because I thought I was going to be in vocational ministry my whole life. Yeah. And so the slow roll into this was part of that was like, Oh, so you were always holding that card back. No, like I this just is didn't just part time with Roger. Well, <laughs> like really? I just wasn't you sure if I was, shared that with me tell I, him right now. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was closing the, I wasn't ready to close the door. You didn't tell me that. I'm looking back <laughs> now and I'm considering where I was at that time. I'm, yeah. I'm a hundred percent certain of that. That I wasn't certain I was ready to close the door on that. Yeah. And if I did go all in, because it was this, such a big part of your identity. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you know. Yeah. A youth pastor Chris. You know. For years. Yeah. And that's and who you were. A hundred percent. Like I, I, re- I really thought I was going to be a youth pastor until I retired. Who? No one does. That. Nobody does. That. No. Nobody does that. Once you get to looking yeah. like us, they don't no. want you around. They and know. then I went and I preached at a, a church in Irvington for a while, and that was not for me. No, I wasn't going to be a senior pastor. That no. wasn't going to work. So yeah. just that that season was was difficult. Now, to say today, yeah, I think I would jump in and move faster. I would get as many leads as I possibly could and recruit as fast as I could to start to ramp things up much quicker because mm-hmm. I, know, I know I'm in this. But I think a lot of people who get into this don't know they're in this yet. 
and probably feel very similar to what I felt. Mm -hmm. Like, is this something I can trust? Am I ready to step away from this thing that I've been doing for so long? Yeah. I've, I've never considered that. Like, talking about it right now, that's a good conversation. I bet there are a lot of people who are thinking that. Yeah. So you would have got more leads, recruited faster, moved faster. Gotten Medicare, involved in Medicare. And added Medicare mm -hmm. right away. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, Zach. Yeah. Um, so this is the restart back then but or here's restart the, here's now? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When Zach considers something, he's already seen 10 years into the future. <laughs> That's true. So he would not change. And, and then he reverse engineers <laughs> 10 years back to this point. Yeah. And then exactly he thinks about his what answer. Needs to happen. And exactly what needs to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so it already did happen. It did it. Yeah. <laughs> you did it, buddy. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, I would have. Uh, so it's again, is it starting right now or is it you, back you then? You set the parameter. We, right. we, Chris asked the original question. So you if can I was, address that and then you can address whatever else you want. This changed so much from, from when we started. Uh, I would say if I started right now, brand new, fresh, what would I would do? Um, I would definitely, um, I would, because the the leads are so much different nowadays, mm -hmm. I would definitely, and, and and not even that, but society's acceptance of insurance being sold over the phone ever since COVID has changed so much. True. Um, I probably would start and really focus on building the business. Um I would build my, I would get my carrier relationships um, for sure. Um, and they would be limited. They wouldn't be a crazy amount because there's, there is a thing called dilution. And when you want to build and scale a company, it, it like really affects everything because uh, there could be too many options. Uh, I would have a few carriers for every type of insurance that I would be focusing on, which would probably be final expense mortgage protection mainly. Um, and I would be doing probably a bunch of mortgage protection over the phone. Um, I would have it set up to where I would have a uh, constant lead flow coming in with an appointment setter that is booking them on my calendar. Yeah. Um, on the other times I would be running final expense and piggybacking and selling, um, and building a book of business and a local presence in a final expense arena, um, with Medicare advantage attached to it. Um, starting to build out the renewals on that, so you had the front end money from the life insurance, the back end money from can, the. Can you can you tell this with being less boring? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, and my, uh, my bobblehead's falling asleep. Is it? Is it? <laughs> Have the other everybody fell asleep. I love you just the call them out right in the podcast. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just yeah, that's I'm it. Just, that's you know, it. You know. No, that's it. That's it. That's good. It's uh, a full game plan. That's what I love. But I would probably open up a. I would open up a small shop. I would. I You'd would, have a would brick have and mortar. A, uh, yeah, I would have. A, I would probably move into that brick and mortar. Um, ish. I would build up to that. Where I had a team of agents, and I would really focus on. Um, that would be for the Medicare side of things probably more, right? Yeah, yeah but all. But yes, to attract people coming in that can then cross-sell everything um, is what I would focus on. And I'm, I'm big into a team and people, and I would bring some of my best friends that specialize in different parts of insurance in, in with me, and we would go into this thing together. And crush it. And uh, we, would, we would build it from there. Very practical. It's like a full game plan, dude. Like people could listen to this podcast that, that's, and like they should do exactly what you're saying. If yeah. they didn't already fall asleep. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. Wake up in case you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody yeah. swerves. Adam just took his headphones off because you yelled Sorry, in his Adam. ears. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> just delete that. You won't feel it. <laughs> Go, ahead. Go ahead, Roger. Well, um, Zach hit on on the last part of Zach's talk is probably where I would start it. I would have I would open up a retail. He can't say that. Man, if I was, that's my that's what I would have done. Can't I, take my, you can't I would have opened up a retail I would have opened up a retail outlet right away. Because one of the things that I think that I that you can do in your local community is network. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people miss out on that. They don't put value in it. Yeah. And they don't put their name out there. And I think with branding capacity now through the internet, social media, Facebook you know, all the ways that you can brand yourself, you can brand yourself pretty quickly in a local market and establish yourself as a market authority. I 
I think. Yeah. I don't think it would take too long to do that at all. You just need to establish yourself. Why do you Why do you feel like that's important as far as like having a location? I'm just curious. I, I think there are a lot of people who probably. I think it, I think it creates a lot of referral home. business, mm-hmm. a lot of credibility in your community. Yeah. And once you create a referral business, you'll tap into other areas of insurance sales that you're probably not um, going Maximize. to hit just with um, an MP lead program, a mortgage protection lead program, or a final expense lead program. Um, and you're going to hit on a, a, a wider a range of uh, needs that you'll be able to service. Like there's, there'll be high net worth individuals that you'll be able to help with whole life and IUL strategies. Yeah. Like, and you're probably not going to hit that in the MP and the, 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 the FE space, just running down that lane hard. But as you, as you network in your church and your local chamber of commerce and your networking events and your associations, and just putting your name out there uh, and doing your local branding, um, you're going to build a name for yourself. And that also helps with local hiring um, and getting established, bringing people in. Um, I would definitely make sure that I was connected to uh, a good organization that had multiple options, multiple verticals, uh, like we do now. You mm-hmm. know, but it took me a long time to to get to here where we right. actually developed it ourselves. Uh, I would want to get connected to a company that offered multiple verticals with support in each one of those verticals so that I didn't feel like I was figuring stuff out on my own. Um, and then align with four or five or six good people who knew what they were doing in each of those spaces and just run hard. Yes, I would have turned on a lead program uh, right away, and I would have had um, space for people to come into the office to to work from there, um, certainly with the, um, the ability now to do things virtually or over the phone. That would probably be a bigger part of what I would do rather than going seeing people face to face. Although I love sitting at the table. Isn't that funny how much like and you're yeah. right, Zach, like how much it's changed. Like the market's changed, approaches have changed, leads have changed, mm-hmm. how you get leads have changed. CRMs have been a thing, you mm-hmm. know, like CRMs have probably been around a while, but you know, the people who work in mortgage protection and final expense were hoofing it. I think there's so many positives to the market nowadays. The opportunity, I think we would all agree, is a hundred times more than what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you think everybody sees it that way, though? No, and here's why. That's a good question. There mm-hmm. so many people nowadays in this space that are coming in, they overcomplicate things. Like if they don't have a one-app quoting tool that can quote every carrier at the same time, it's like they can't. For the lowest they, price and a CRM to manage everything it, for them, they, they don't know they what to do. They can't pay their mortgage because they don't know how to like <laughs> right. download the mutual yeah. Omaha quoting tool and quote it. Like. Yeah. They don't know how to do the the paper quoting that's in the back of every every manual. Like things have gotten so technology advanced, if they don't yeah. have the simplest thing, it, it creates unnecessary barriers for that's them to really be successful. Point. I am afraid that there's going to be a week where everything's unplugged, and we will literally stare at each other for three days. <laughs> I, I think be staring at you. I think about ninety. <laughs> like, probably. What, what do I do? What? How do I? How do I eat? I think probably about 97% of my business is on paper apps. I know, me too, right? Yeah. I and love it. It sounds so old right now, you know. But, but you remember the toaster, Evan? That's right. But, so. but you are right, though. Like, there's there's an acceleration of technology to the point where it's it almost makes somebody, <laughs> it can make you useless if you let it. It can make you useless. Or it can make you feel like you you have no capacity to to learn it, yes, to adopt Mm -hmm. it, and Mm -hmm. to implement it so you can be successful. And if everybody around you, that's the only thing they're talking about, you think there is no other way. Mm -hmm. I need one source. I need this one big wonderful package of lead orders and insurance application orders coming into my pipeline so I can sit on the phone and close apps. Yeah, the, and there's in fact, a, I'd like to automate it completely, so I don't need to talk to anybody. <laughs> there's a falling you know, in love with. There's people trying to do that. New information, I think, in this industry too, at times, like where you you want to know that you know something, but knowing something doesn't pay your bills. No, right? I, yeah. I think that happens a little bit mm-hmm. here and there. Yeah, not, not only that, but I think people are going to continue to get. They're going to forget how to talk to people in real life. And they're going to forget how to ask real questions with real eye contact, generate real emotion, and yeah. get that out of them. Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's going to dehumanize the insurance sale process uh, quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to end up 
I mean, it could be wrong, but I think it's going to end up coming back, back to to. No, it will be valued, future. and the people who yeah, know how we'll to do that over that the reaction. phone, know how to be people over the phone and engage people face to face. Either way, are the ones who are going to win. That's funny. I think this is has transitioned a little bit the conversation. I mean, what would we do? What we would do is is very dependent on how things have changed, hasn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. it's pretty interesting. Uh, well, I mean, I'm looking back and even I, I should have started a local brand then. I should have. I, mm-hmm. I probably, I, if I was oh. going to start all over again, I would start a local brand, even right. without all the technology, because I think that's one thing that you're in, you can be, be in control of. You can brand yourself. So unless you're just wanting to be in business by yourself, for yourself, for the rest of your life, you still need to brand yourself. But if you want to scale and grow, you need it's more important even to brand yourself. So mm-hmm. either one of those scenarios, you got to brand yourself. And I think it's easy to do in a local market, uh, especially if you live in a smaller area or if you live in a suburb, city yeah. center, um, or in, in rural uh, rural America, wherever you are, like it, it's, it's easier to do if you're in a, a local presence. Just go all in. Yeah. Go all in on the brand. Show up to events. You know, be present. Be a voice. Yeah. Wear your, you know, wear it on your... Wear it on your, on your chest and, and show people that you're, that you're there. Um, it's amazing. I mean, we, we do the podcast, right? I just got a message right before I walked in here. And someone said, thank you. I've been a longtime listener of the podcast. Um, FMO or IMO question mark. Where, where does someone new start? This is the most confusing question for someone trying to get into the business. There are so many options. I don't know where to start. I'd really like to focus on Medicare. Can you recommend somebody? who's mm-hmm. good in the Medicare space that can support me. Yeah. Well, like that person is looking for someone who has credibility in the space. That comes with brand and consistency. So if you've got consistency and proven track record and you've got brand, mm-hmm. people know about you. Yeah. Those are the people who get referred. Those are the people who grow their business. Um, so I would have done that, um, but I would have, um, I certainly would have jumped on the, the phone train a lot sooner. Uh, and pick up do you the think phone. do you think it would have made a difference? I mean, like like when we t- like COVID seemed to play a part in that, but mm-hmm. there were people who were having success before COVID. Yeah, in phone sales, I believe it would have mm-hmm. because you know in my you know th- to the extent of our sales previously in my former business, it was setting appointments, but we still saw people face to face. We never closed over the phone. It was like it was like don't close over the phone. You're losing money if you close over the phone. Why are you trying to close over the phone? It was like it was frowned on, you know, closing over the phone. I mean, we, we taught that because we knew we can maximize the opportunity sitting in front of somebody. But now with the proliferation and the apparent need that everyone realizes that they have with insurance, it's become more of a commodity. And if it's more of a commodity, people buy it quicker. Mm. They don't need as much in-depth, especially the low-hanging fruit. And I believe there's mortgage protection policies that fall into that category. I believe there's basic term, like simple term. Yeah. You know, that's why the, the big term engines are just have the quote engines and you can apply right there online and submit mm-hmm. your app and get approved. Right? People are doing it online now without without an agent. It's just done through marketing and a chat bot and submit and get approved right there online and they haven't talked to anybody. And so the whole sales cycle happens virtually. Um so I think there's some low hanging fruit with with those. But I think the more advanced stuff, like advanced market sales for annuities, retirement planning. Yeah. Uh, tax-free retirement protection with IULs and the banking on yourself, the infinity, uh, infinite banking concept. I think that does require a face-to-face because mm-hmm. it's a you're you're setting up someone's financial plans. You know, it's yeah, it's that advisor touch. It's that next level. So, um, I would have I would have uh, had a local presence and been inviting people into the office and uh, inviting people into the environment, but still capitalizing on the phone. Uh, I got a question on, for you, Chris. It took you uh, your part time coming into this, knowing what you know now. Would you, what would your what would change in your activity or your approach of transitioning into this? Well, that that was you know, and I think I think Roger said it. That was my initial response to it. Is I, I would have gone, like if everything was reset today and I was starting, I would go all in today. All in. All in. Yeah, no question. Activity. Training, activity, mindset, yeah. asking questions, mentorship, leads, everything. Right. Yeah. Like for me, it was a fear of letting go of my identity of what I was doing before 
and did, could I do it? Did I know I could do it? Now, I mean, honestly, like I don't like today going forward, I, I don't care about a lead. It doesn't matter what it is. I know I can figure it out, you know, or mm-hmm. teach somebody or show somebody if we're starting day one today, you mm-hmm. know? Um, but yeah, yeah. Just then. And what I've learned from, from Roger and other business leaders, the, you know, sorry, could you repeat that? I fell asleep. <laughs> Touche, but at least your bobblehead's awake. He's sleeping, standing up. He's he's sleeping, sleeping, standing up. Standing up. (laughs) But uh, he agrees with me. You know these uh, these leaders. They, you know, scale happens because of speed. It happens because of it, and you can't do it slowly. No, it's like it's like sand falling through an hourglass. If you if you try to do it slow, you have to move quick. And the other thing I learned. This is another thing is that everything in insurance runs on the large law of large numbers. Everything does. Like premiums, whatever, you know, like death benefits, all that stuff, face amounts, it's all based on large numbers. The ability for the insurance industry to operate to is function, based on... Yeah. To work, it's based on that. But when it comes into onto our side, we, we don't approach it that way. Like it, we don't do it with leads and we don't do it with recruiting right because we're afraid or for whatever reason we want to do it with as little as possible Mm -hmm. and then you're trying to scale without speed so yeah i would move a lot quicker boom closing thoughts zach um if you're listening to this um and you have you're just starting or you're looking at starting uh, I think you have three different perspectives on they're all very similar i mean roger basically copied everything i said uh, so Adam could probably just, you know, delete one of the two and just put our names on that. No, but if you're starting just now, um, I think this is a really good perspective for you guys to go out there and, and know what success will know what it would be. It's not just our opinion. Ask anybody that's been in the business. If they had to start today, I guarantee you the answers would be very similar. And we would all look at the opportunity and we would light up because it's a lot brighter than um, – than it used to be. The opportunity is better than ever in the insurance space right now. Um, And the one thing that we can't do is we can't hold ourselves back. We can't limit our opportunity. And when we talk about the the law of large numbers and scaling and growing and building something successful, uh, those large numbers also include the number of hours you need to put into training, the lead hours you need to put into self-development, the amount of days, uh, the activity, Every aspect of it, yourself personally, but also in the investment into your leads and your opportunity. Um, get with groups. Get get people around you. The one thing you don't have that we have now when we're talking about starting right now is you don't have the confidence or belief in yourself. Um, when Chris is talking about um, he doesn't care about a lead now, it's not because he believes in leads. It's because he believes in himself. Um, so if you don't have that, you can borrow that from your mentors. So get connected with a group, some support system, somebody that can help you show you the way that's been there, that's doing it now. And it could be your past of least, path of least resistance. And really at the end of the day, meet you where you're at and help you get where you want to go. Um, I hope this podcast was helpful. Um, if there's any questions or any advice that any of us can provide for you, reach out to us. Um, we're always here to help. We'll and, catch you on and, another podcast. And if there's any way you can add Medicare. Do it. Yes. <laughs> There's yes. any way you can have Medicare? <laughs> do it. If you're in the senior market at all, figure out Medicare. Yeah. Medicare. We'll end on that. See you guys. <laughs>